Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and thank you for tuning in to the very last episode in the series of Reading the Constitution. This is episode number 20. Now, if you go back to the very first video that I made about this, it was over five months ago, so we have uh, about five months worth of Reading the Constitution, and I'm very happy that uh, that I did it, and thank you all very much for coming along with me. So uh, today what we're going to do is read the Declaration of Independence, so it's going to be kind of a longer video because it's several pages, but we're going to read the Declaration of Independence and end it with the signer, so let's get started. The Declaration of Independence, Action of Second Continental Congress, July 4th, 1776. The Unanimous Declaration of the Thirteen United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare these causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experiences hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces and designed to reduce them under absolute disposition, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sacrifice of these colonies. And such now necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over the states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for public good, He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation until his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with mainly firmness his invasions on the right of the people. He has refused for a long time, after such disillusions, to cause others to be elected whereby the legislative powers, incapable of annihilation, have returned to the people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all dangers of invasion without and convolutions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migration hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. 
He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount of payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has affected to render the military independent and superior of the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution, and unacknowledged by our laws giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they commit on inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and, and enlarging boundaries so as to render it once an example and a fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments, for suspending our own legislatures, and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated his government here, by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coast, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, disillusion, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken them captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections among us, and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers the merciless Indian savages who known rule of warfare is indistinguishable destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned our redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define as tyrant and unfit to be ruler of the free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our emigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connection and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in General Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, 
conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may have may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, we affirm reliance on the protection of the divine providence. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Now I'll do my best to try and read the names of the signers. Signers of the Unanimous Declaration According to the authenticated list printed by Order of Congress, January 18, 1777. Georgia Button Gwinnett Lyman Hall George Walton North Carolina William Hopper Joseph Heaves John Penn South Carolina Edward Ruthage Thomas Hayward Jr. Thomas Lynch Jr. Arthur Middleton, Massachusetts, John Hancock, Samuel, Samuel Adams, John Adams, Robert Treat Payne, Elbridge Gary, Maryland, Samuel Chase, William Paca, Thomas Stone, Charles Carroll of Carnelton, Virginia, George Wythe, Richard Henry Lee, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Harrison, Thomas Nelson Jr., Francis Lightfoot Lee, Carter Braxton, Pennsylvania, Robert Morris, Benjamin Rush, Benjamin Franklin, John Morton, George Claymer, James Smith, George Taylor, James Wilson, George Ross, Delaware, Caesar Rodney, George Reed, Thomas McKean, New York, William Floyd, Philip Livingston, Francis Lewis, Lewis Mor Morris, New Jersey, Richard Stockton, John Witherspoon, Francis Hopkins, John Hart, Abraham Clark, New Hampshire, Joseph Burlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thornton, Rhode Island, Stephen Hopkins, William Ellery, Connecticut, Roger Sherman, Samuel Huntington, William Williams, Oliver Wolcott. Well, there it is, the Declaration of Independence, a very powerful document, and a lot of very powerful quotes have come out of it. I'm very proud to have read it, and proud to live in a country that would create a document such as that. Now, I know at the end of some of my videos, uh, I have posted certain things that I felt were relevant to that particular video, and if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to do that again, because as I was reading the Declaration of Independence, I noticed that there was one uh, particular paragraph in there that uh, related to uh, things that were going on currently today. Now, I know that a lot of it is actually uh, relevant to today's uh, political uh, environment, but this one particular thing kind of uh, caught me, so if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to read that to you. The passage that I see as being most relevant, not most relevant, but a passage that was relevant to this time right now was this one right here. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. Now, I will leave that open for you guys to uh, think about it yourselves and what that might apply to when it comes to today's standards. Uh, but anyway, thank you all very much for sticking with me through this whole thing. I learned a great deal. I hope you did as well. Uh, and again, this was almost six months in the making. So a, a long series, but I think a, a very helpful series. And I'm going to go back and watch them all again. Thank you all very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. You guys have a great day.